In the first hours of early spring, you go outside to a nearby creek where you decide to hang out for a little while. You're feeling kind of bored, so you decide to look for some small creatures nearby. You find some insects, small fish, and even some amphibians. However, after flipping a piece of bark that you find on the side of the creek, you find something that gets you a little frightened, but not too much. What you found underneath it was a small black and yellow snake, known by many as a garter snake. But what exactly is this? Garter snakes are a genus that consists of 35 species of garter snake that are found throughout North America. They have adapted to nearly all environments in their ranges, spanning from southern Alaska to Mexico. One species, the common garter snake, has about 13 subspecies spread across North America, an incredible number for a snake like the garter snake. In the Pacific Northwest, garter snakes are a common sight and possibly one of the most common reptiles in the area. There are three species of garter snake found in the Pacific Northwest. The first is the common garter snake. This is the most abundant species and has two subspecies in the Pacific Northwest, that being the Puget Sound garter snake and the Valley garter snake. They're also large, usually sizing out at 26 inches but can grow to almost 42 inches or 3.5 feet long. The Puget Sound garter snake is found on the coasts of Washington and British Columbia, while the Valley garter snake is found in the inland Northwest, while also ranging from Central California to Southern Alaska. In their range, they can be found in marshes, ponds, and streams, as long as there's tall grass or other large vegetation around it. In these areas, they feed on a variety of animals. This mostly consists of amphibians and small fish, as well as earthworms, slugs, crayfish, leeches, grasshoppers, and other reptiles like lizards and occasionally other snakes. This diverse diet allows them to thrive in other environments. However, they're also eaten by a variety of other predators, from owls, hawks, and herons, to mammals like minks, otters, raccoons, and opossums. They're even eaten by bullfrogs and predatory fish like bass. It's pretty shocking how a garter snake, or any snake in general, can live in places as far north as Alaska, but they have a method to keep them in their northern range. In the late fall and early winter, massive amounts of garter snakes will go into dens and begin their own type of hibernation called hibernaculum. Once the spring arrives, the snakes will emerge from their dens and begin to breed. Females are wrapped around by 10 or more males in a ball called a mating ball. The goal for males is to be able to get to the females before the others do. Sometimes they will breed while hibernating, however, mating is usually during the spring. The females will give birth to live young through a process called oviviparous. I think I said that right. They give birth to young from July to October. Luckily, these creatures are least concerned in terms of population, obviously because of the fact that they can range from Alaska to Mexico. Now that we've gone over the main species of garter snake, we now need to look at the other two species. The first of the other two species of garter snakes is the western terrestrial garter snake. The western terrestrial garter snake gets its name from the fact that it lives more inland than its counterparts. It is also one of the larger garter snake species in the Pacific Northwest, as they can size out at 41 inches normally. Their range expands from central British Columbia and Alberta, Canada, to the entirety of the western United States, and as far east as Nebraska, and as far south as Baja California. Similarly to the common garter snake, it has several subspecies, however it has nowhere near the amount as the common garter snake, with only 4 subspecies. In the Pacific Northwest, there are only 2 subspecies, the mountain garter snake and the wandering garter snake. They have a similar lifestyle to the common garter snake as well. Terrestrial garter snakes are found in similar environments to the common garter snake, and their diet is similar as well. However, a terrestrial garter snake's diet can, can vary based on the geographic region it is based in. For example, if a terrestrial garter snake lives closer to the coast, it will feed on terrestrial prey such as salamanders, slugs, small animals, and lizards. If it lives more inland, it will have a more aquatic-based diet consisting of tadpoles, leeches, and fish. They are also predated by it on the same animals as the common garter snake. During their breeding season, females will mate with more than one male and the female will give birth to live young between July and September, which is pretty similar to the common garter snake. The other species of garter snake found in the Pacific Northwest is the Northwestern garter snake. This is the main garter snake, the one that is mainly found here in the Pacific Northwest. They are the smallest of the three species growing to only about 38 inches in length. 
They range from British Columbia to Northern California. They feed mostly on slugs, earthworms, and amphibians. Similar to the other two garter snakes, the Northwestern garter snake breeds in the spring and gives birth late summer and early fall. Strangely though, I couldn't find any more information about the Northwestern garter snake, but most of this garter snake's life is similar to the other garter snakes. All in all, the garter snake in general is an amazing snake and one of my personal favorites, and hopefully with enough conservation, these snakes will continue to thrive in the Pacific Northwest.